Welcome to Business Mentorship, Keeping It Real, where we feature entrepreneurs and enterprise leaders who participate in our guest blog with their great ideas on ShareYourStories.online. Our guest is Martine, educated as a pharmacist and language teacher, who now welcomes guests to her B&B. We're going to discuss how she created a niche as a host and tour guide in the City of Lights. Martine joins us from Paris, France. Welcome. Bonjour. Thank you Bonjour. so much. Bonjour. Okay. Thank you so much. Oh, my pleasure, Martine. So tell us, how does one go from a pharmacist and a language teacher to host a B&B? Ah, um, I had a pharmacy on the Montorgueil area, but uh, my husband was working for an American company and we decided to move to the States. And when I came back, I did not want to be in a pharm pharmacist anymore. So uh, I was a volunteer for the international school where my kids were, um, were attending. Then uh, life brought me to a divorce and uh, I decided that I did not want to go back to pharmacy and decided to open a BNB to stay in an international environment. You know, it's and so amazing. I've been watching your social posts and I see that you really do introduce people to a different side of Paris. I try, you know, there are so many things going on in Paris. Uh, it's almost impossible to propose everything. Mm -hmm. So I focused on food and art, but I'm really trying, you know, you have so many different uh, kind of guests. Some it's their first time and they want to uh, discover the ABCs. Some, some they already know, they are Francophile, they speak French. Some don't really need me at all. They just want a nice locket on the roof, but that's not a, my cup of tea. I like to uh, welcome people, interfere and show them some, you know, nice places that maybe they would not have heard of. Okay. So how do people find you, Martine? Because, you know, there's got to be so many people who are also hosting B&Bs who provide a similar sort of service to yourself. So is it all referrals? Yes, I started to be on platforms. I won't name them because I don't like them. <laughs> uh, and, uh, but you know, they are, they, they want to rule your, your, your business. Okay. And so with the help of a BNP coach, uh, we are a large group and she told us how to do it and uh, or to try. And um, that's what I have done. And I'm so happy. So I have a lot of returning guests or guests addressing their families and friends. And, you know, it's a tiny business. I have only one unit for a couple or a third uh, person and it's very well located. So it's easy to fill, but at the same time, it uh, gives me enough time to really welcome my guests and help them as much as they want. Sometimes, as I said, sometimes they don't want it, but most of the time they are very happy. And we so, share a lot of time, they became friends. So tell us where exactly is your B&B located? Because, you know, if you're a first time visitor to Paris, boy, that city can be very overwhelming. You know, there's the left bank and the right bank. And, you know, there's so many wonderful sites that people think, oh, I want to be by the Eiffel Tower or I want to be by Dorsey or I want to be Notre Dame. So how do you, where exactly are you located in the wonderful city? Okay, so uh, it's on the right bank mm -hmm. and it's arrondissement second. So if you know that Paris is like a snail. Right. Okay, all the, okay, so from one to four, Arrondissement, it's center right. And five, six, seven is center left. So I am second. So you can guess I'm pretty central. Central, yeah. And six, seven minutes from the Louvre, not far from the opera. Now between my apartment and the Louvre, you have uh, Les Halles. And in Les Halles, you have a new contemporary museum as well. I am, let's say, 10, 15 minutes from Le Marais. You can even walk to Orsay. It's a little bit longer, but I mean, it's really central. Mm -hmm. and, um, and, and you know, what I really loved about your story was when you mentioned that you, it was your family, it was your, the influence of your parents 
and how they always were welcoming guests from abroad to France. So tell us a little bit about how that influenced your, your business. Yeah, okay. On my father's side, I have a family in UK. And on my mother's side, it was more uh, in the US. We don't see the cousins a lot, but they were visiting. And my mom always liked to entertain, host them, uh, them and friends. And uh, her table was very appreciated. So I think that uh, went into my genes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. Influenced how you, your your own business, right? Yeah, yeah. And 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 uh, I. It's funny because lately I remembered that when I was a child, I loved to draw, and my uh, most of the time I was uh, drawing houses with lots of windows, and doors, and smoke out of the chimney. And I was told that it meant that I liked hosting and, and cooking. So that's what I'm doing. Isn't that fantastic? I am realizing my maybe childhood uh, dream. Your dream. Yes, exactly. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. So who is your perfect guest? So, you know, you must see that you have with repeat clientele and with referrals, you must have a, a certain type of guest that visits your uh, b and So is it a mature couple or are they young people or is it people of all ages? Uh, I attract mostly, I would say, older couple. OK, mm -hmm. because I am not into modern technologies like uh, paying online. <laughs> I want to know my guest before they pay. <laughs> uh, I uh, And I would favor uh, maybe longer stays rather than, you know, coming over a weekend, right. which is, uh, for Londoners, for example, coming one week or two weeks or a month is more difficult. But I do attract a lot of young retiree people or not so young retiree people. And they have time and they want to uh, know Paris. They want to live like a Parisian. And they, are, and they love food. And they love art most of the time. And, and sometimes other things too. And so we, as soon as they want to, uh, to book, we start a discussion. Okay. What, what are they expecting? What would they like uh, if they want me to help or if they want to stay independent? And Oh, that's really wonderful. So I love the personal touch that you offer because quite often when we go to a foreign city, we're very intimidated sometimes by, you know, where to find things. And if you're looking for an experience that's a little bit less touristy, it sounds like you have a wonderful way of introducing people to a Parisian life. I do. I hope I do. I mean, uh, I um, I share my uh, gourmet addresses. Okay? Yeah. I uh, either the markets or the local uh, shops or the restaurants. Uh, I share. I have um, uh, cards to museums and often for two. And so when I have a uh, guest either I invite one and the other one pays or whatever but mm -hmm. they also uh, cut lines so it's it's nice and uh, and you know maybe telling them about something that only Parisian uh, know or okay mm -hmm. so it's a mix of of touristy stuff like everybody is looking for mm -hmm. uh, and also something that is more uh, custom design for them according to what they like, their hobbies, and what they are looking for. So tell me, if you were to describe, you've lived in Paris for most of your adult life. So uh, child one. <laughs> yeah. as a Parisian, how yeah. do you find living in the City of Lights? Because you have, there are so many tourists. I, I can't even remember. I know it's millions of people that visit Paris every year from all over the world. So how, how is living in Paris as a Parisian when you have this wonderful multicultural element of visitors? I love it. Uh, for uh, a few years, I lived in uh, the southwest of France mm -hmm. and I would run a larger B&B nine months of the year and coming back to uh, Rue d'Argout um, in winters. But then I was missing Paris. I am a city girl and I love my city. Yeah. So, you know, I don't mind living with, with tourists as long as we uh, 
uh, I don't know. I think it's a nice cooperation. <laughs> yeah, exactly. As long as everyone respects each other, right? Exactly, exactly. And I think that along the years, French also learned how to welcome tourists. So the uh, the prejudice have all gone now. <laughs> oh, that's wonderful. Now, one yeah. of the things that we do in the guest blog, Martine, is we ask people to share some words of advice. And your words are dare to be yourself. Yeah. So tell us why that's important to you and your business. It's important because you cannot please everybody. As I said, guests are different, okay? And so they expect different things. So you should only offer what you know and what you are able to offer. And you will find people who would be, we will be happy about it. And the others, they are, as you said, hundreds of uh, B&Bs and rentals in Paris, they will find their niche as well. But yes. I think the best is to offer what you, you, what you know. Well, I must say, uh, Martine, I love your joie de vivre because uh, the yeah. fact that you uh, tailor uh, the experience to the individual guest is such a wonderful uh, bonus when booking the B&B through you. And uh, who knows, maybe the next time I come to France, you and I can share a glass of wine somewhere and you can show me a few of the sites. I would be thrilled. Oh, terrific. <laughs> terrific. Okay. Thank you so much for joining me, Martine. It was an absolute pleasure to speak with you. And I do hope to see you in Paris. One day. Absolutely. My next visit for sure. Okay. Goodbye. Thank you so much. Bye-bye. To you, our viewing and listening audience, I'd like to thank you for joining us in this edition of Keeping It Real, where we introduce you to the person behind the logo. I'm Trish Tonai, founder and host for the series. And if you're interested in sharing your business story, visit our website at shareyourstories.online. Thanks again for joining us. And we look forward to meeting you next time when we share another great idea.